some people to pop on. I see folks coming in now. Really great to have you this morning. Thank you for joining us. So before we do a brief introduction, I just want to remind you all of a few things. The first is that at the bottom bar on your Zoom, you'll see three dots um, that say more. If you click on more, you'll see captions and you can put on closed captioning which might be helpful today. Our speaker will tell you a little bit about why, um, but you can certainly do that by visiting the more button and hitting captions. We also encourage questions. We want you to get the most out of this time. You'll see a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Feel free to just throw in those questions as they're coming up and we will get to them at the end. So thank you for being with us today for Medicare Fraud Prevention. My name is Katie Starantino. I am the Director of Wellness Initiatives at Friends Life Care. As always, so pleased to be with you today. This presentation covers Medicare fraud prevention with particular emphasis on preventing, detecting, and reporting suspected fraud, errors, or abuse. Our speaker is Dan Malloy. Dan is the Outreach and Engagement Supervisor for the Senior Medicare Patrol at CARI, which I hope Daniel will tell us about CARI because it's a great organization. Um, and he has worked in Medicare fraud prevention for the past four years. He's a graduate of uh, Penn State University and St. Joseph's University with his master's. He has utilized healthcare administration coursework and subsequent experience to improve the well being of older adults across Pennsylvania. And I'll now hand it over to you, Dan, and um, everyone put the questions in, turn the captioning on, and we will get to your questions at the end. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, as Katie mentioned, my name is Dan Malloy. I am the Outreach and Engagement Supervisor for the Senior Medicare Patrol, or the SMP program at CARI, which stands for the Center for Advocacy for the Rights and the Interests of Elders, which is a 501c3 nonprofit located in Center City, Philadelphia, where uh, our organization has been advocating for the rights, well-being, and interests of older adults, uh, not only in Pennsylvania, but across the country since 1977. Uh, as uh, Katie mentioned, I, I am wearing a mask, so if it's difficult to hear me, uh, please let me know. Check out the closed captioning. That should be helpful. Uh, the background is uh, I had some dental surgery recently. There may or may not be a bit of a... Uh, vacancy in the front of my mouth so uh where two teeth should be waiting on a new denture um so i am uh, saving you and me the trouble of having to see my unsightly face so um at any rate if it's difficult to hear me or if i am not making any sense please let me know um, you can send it in the chat katie if you don't mind monitoring that specific thing for me that would be great um, and i can turn my camera off and remove the mask all right well, uh, again, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, thank you to Friends Life Care for including me. Uh, it's really actually quite an honor. I was looking at the uh, list of different presentations as part of this series, so uh, it's great to be involved. All right, today we'll be talking a little bit about uh, Medicare fraud or really Medicare fraud prevention. As I like to say, I'm not here to perpetrate fraud, uh, actually quite the contrary. Uh, so. What is the Senior Medicare Patrol here on out? We'll probably be referring to that as the SMP. Uh, as you can see on the screen, I hope the SMP is a national initiative. Uh, we focus on curbing fraud and abuse uh, in Medicare and a little bit in Medicaid. Uh, we do this uh, through outreach education. And then we have a very strong advocacy arm as well. Uh, really the main point here is that we are a program of empowerment. So. Uh, part of these presentations, part of these discussions, and why uh, I find a lot of uh, use in our program and the presentations that myself and our 31 volunteers provide uh, is that we seek to empower you folks as beneficiaries, your families, and caregivers, uh, that you really do matter. You really do have a voice, and uh, we really we, we want to be right there side by side with you fighting back uh, against some of these scammers. Uh, so we'll talk today a lot. About Medicare fraud, I will try not to bore you all. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of those uh, fun scams and phone calls you're probably all getting. Um, so 
the background of the program, uh, back in 1997, Congress uh, started to figure out, wow, uh, Medicare is losing a lot of money. It's a fraud. Uh, at this point, uh, they estimate, Medicare estimates itself that it loses about 60 to $90 billion a year to fraud. That's with a B. Um, I'm, I'm not as optimistic as them. I round up. It's a little bit easier when you have a small brain like mine. So uh, I round up to $100 billion of, of losses to fraud, errors, and abuse in the Medicare program uh, every year. Now, that's a lot of money. Uh, most of us, myself included, will probably never see a million dollars, let alone a hundred billion. So to put it in perspective, I lived in South Philly for a number of years, um, not too far from Citizens Bank Park, where the Phillies lost the World Series. That, that's a beautiful stadium. That stadium cost about $500 million to build. So if you do a little bit of math, we bit of math, you'll, you'll figure out you could build probably about 150 Major League Baseball stadiums with the amount of money that Medicare loses to fraud each and every year. Um, it's, it's astronomical. And uh, the point of our program is to start to try to curb that both at an individual and systemic level. So please keep in mind as we go through this discussion today that Medicare is largely a tax funder, uh, taxpayer funded program, <laughs> excuse me. So uh, every single dollar that we lose to fraud in the Medicare program is coming out of all of our pockets, whether you paid in the past, currently are paying, uh, and will be paying in the future like me. The result of that is, is kind of a twofold issue. We have a financial problem with that, the dollar signs, which is significant and has an impact on uh, the second piece, which is actually the healthcare aspect of this. So Medicare trust fund is being put at risk. The Medicare trust fund is what is supposed to ensure uh, that dollars are there to pay for Medicare services, both now and in years moving forward. When we lose money, it's fraud. It's coming out of the trust fund. Where that's fewer dollars available uh, for, for services. Uh, I mentioned my teeth already. I also um, have a 40% hearing loss, so I'm doing great. Um, I'm sure I'll... I'll be a great Medicare beneficiary one day um, if I make it that long. I would love to see the dollars that Medicare has available so that folks like me um, can get the services that a lot of folks like you are getting now. That being said, I don't think I have to explain to anybody here on this call that Medicare does not cover hearing, dental, and vision uh, as comprehensively as we would like. Uh, if we weren't losing so much money to fraud, perhaps things like hearing aids, dentures, uh, eyeglasses, uh, and, and vision correction could be provided a little bit more comprehensively. Um, so dollar sign wise, we do typically see some higher premiums for beneficiaries and cost sharing. This year is a little bit different because of the inflation. Um, but really when it comes down to it, the major impact here is that that last little check mark at the bottom, decreased quality of care for beneficiaries. You know, when you don't have the ability to pay for different services in the Medicare program, uh, that leaves you folks on the hook or that leaves your supplement plan on the hook. And sometimes that puts us out of the running for services that we could really use. Um, this also impacts some of the healthcare access we have. Uh, I do want to mention real quickly too, an extreme example. Uh, some of these scammers are very sophisticated. Uh, I would love it if they would put their brilliant minds to better use. Uh, however, I cannot control that. Um, they, they are able to utilize all sorts of technology, including artificial intelligence, and uh, they can actually get into your claims and change some of your diagnosis codes. So again, this is, this is a rather extreme example, but if a scammer is able to get into your record and put a diabetes diagnosis code on your claim so that they can bill Medicare for hundreds of diabetic testing supplies, that's not only gonna mean that your Medicare information was compromised, uh, which is an issue. That's also going to mean that doctors moving forward are going to think that you might have diabetes. It's going to lend uh, difficulties and conversations in some of the care you may receive. Uh, so there are impacts here. All right. All that uplifting stuff aside, why don't we talk a little bit about what we can do to fight back? At the SMP, we follow a three-pronged approach, protect, detect, and report. First piece uh, is pretty simple. Protect yourselves, folks. Uh, keep your healthcare, personal, and financial information private. That is your information, not mine, and not somebody calling you on the phone, offering you a free 
uh, service. Uh, we always recommend folks, if you have questions about your health care, uh, have questions about what services are available to you, uh, please talk to your primary care physician. Uh, only give your Medicare information, Social Security information to providers who you know and trust. Uh, this does not include people dressing up in lab coats at the mall. Uh, this would, again, be your, uh, your, your, uh, your provider care team, including pharmacists and uh, lab techs and whatnot. So protect yourselves. Number two is DTECH. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a, in a couple minutes in slightly more detail. Again, I don't want to bore all of you. Um, it's it's fairly simple, but it's actually really important. Uh, we recommend that folks keep records of their health care appointments to compare to their health care insurance statements. Uh, those are going to be Medicare summary notices or MSNs or explanations of benefits, EOBs. Uh, depends on your plan, traditional Medicare or Medicare Advantage. Uh, so we'll talk more about that. And then, of course, the key piece, the last one, reporting. We cannot help you if you don't help us and vice versa. So um, we do ask if you think your information has been compromised, you or a loved one, give us a call. Give Medicare a call. Uh, if you suspect a provider is acting inappropriately, uh, do the same. And we'll talk more about that, too, I promise. Okay. Some quick examples. Um, these are just in, in the four boxes at the top, billing for services, supplies, equipment not provided, unnecessary supplies, requesting information in exchange for free services and improper coding to obtain a higher payment. Uh, these are examples of some of the types, uh, general types of fraud, errors, and abuse that we see happening. Uh, I wanna focus on a couple of these. Uh, I will go all over the place in order. I can never keep myself straight, trust me. Uh, the third one in the green box, requesting personal, financial, or medical information in exchange for quote unquote free services. I would love for things to be free. Unfortunately, most things are not. Uh, <laughs> if somebody is calling you on the phone asking you uh, for your Medicare number in exchange for a free back brace, you can pretty much guarantee yourself it's not real. Uh, so be alert for that word free, especially if somebody is asking you for something in return. Uh, the other ones are kind of um, kind of similar, kind of related. So billing for unnecessary supplies and, and second box and the last one, um, improper coding to obtain higher payment, uh, typically fall into the vein of uh, Medicare abuse, where providers are uh, billing in a way that is supposed to generate more revenue for them. A lot of times we, we used to see this a lot in years past in physical therapy. Uh, you know, a physical therapist comes in and does 10 minutes of work and then sits on TikTok or YouTube for the next 50 minutes, but bills you for an hour of service. Um, it's not really appropriate. Uh, billing for uh, tests that aren't needed. I actually just read an article today. Um, there was a $1.5 million bust here in Philadelphia of providers who um, were putting fake diagnosis codes to obtain a higher payment. Not appropriate. It's a form of billing abuse. Uh, to me, that is fraud. So We'll talk about how to spot this on the uh, next slide or two. At the bottom, common Medicare scams. This is, uh, this is all the fun stuff. I'm sure some of you folks have encountered these scams. Uh, I will go through them fairly quickly because they all work the same way. Um, genetic testing. <laughs> Boy. In October of 2019, the Justice Department, the Federal Justice Department, um, had a $2.3 billion bust on genetic testing. Uh, rest assured that did not deter any scammer, unfortunately. Uh, however, that was still a significant sum. What was happening, scammers were calling folks, Medicare beneficiaries. They were also sending emails and setting up in, in parking lots, the mall, outside of CVS, uh, with lab coats on, offering people free genetic testing in exchange for their Medicare information. What they were telling people is, we'll send you a kit in the mail, swab your cheek, pack it up, send it back to us, and we will let you know whether future generations are predisposed to cancer. We'll also let you know if they're predisposed to certain types of uh, cardiac issues. Um, <laughs> not true. That is, that is not true at all. Uh, Medicare will only cover uh, one very specific type of genetic test that needs to be certified by an oncologist. Um, in these circumstances, 
uh, people were swabbing their cheek, giving Medicare information out, and uh, never getting their test results back. So uh, that presents several issues. One, their DNA is probably out there. Two, uh, their Medicare information is definitely out there. And three, they're not actually getting the services that they thought they were. Uh, the last piece, um, Medicare on average is going to pay over $11,000 per genetic test. Yes, I will repeat that. Medicare will pay over $11,000 per genetic test. On average, that's a lot of money. Hence the $2.3 billion uh, bust that the uh, DOJ produced in 2019. This is starting to trickle out a little bit. Keep an eye out for that. Anybody calling you about cheek swabs or genetic testing, hang up the phone. If you have questions, talk to your doctor. Same thing, too, for durable medical equipment, also known as DME. We're thinking wheelchairs, back braces, knee braces, uh, rollators, walkers, even some, some testing supplies, durable medical equipment. Key piece being that first word, durable. <laughs> we all know this isn't true. Medicare thinks that those pieces of equipment will last five years. So they think that your rollator, your walker, your wheelchair is going to last five years. Uh, those things get used every day. That's a lot of use, a lot of wear and tear. As such, Medicare will only pay for one piece of each type of equipment every five years. So what we see happening is same thing as genetic testing, people calling, uh, offering back braces, knee braces, different types of orthotic devices uh, in exchange for Medicare information. Most, most of the time, people weren't receiving what they thought they were going to, back brace, knee brace. Uh, when they did, it was usually pretty much a knockoff ace bandage, um, not fitted to the person's body. That makes it unsafe to use. Um, these are going for over $1,000 a piece. If you do have questions about durable medical equipment, um, talk to your doctor, or if you do see a physical or occupational therapist or have one in your family like I do, uh, talk to them, see what is what is best for you, uh, and utilize the appropriate channels for that. Keep in mind, these devices, again, have to be fitted to your body to be safe, uh, so keep that in mind. Last one here, I actually just updated this morning, COVID at-home test strips. We're starting to see this phase out again as well. Uh, about two to three weeks ago, this was a major issue. Um, what was happening is people were getting unsolicited boxes of the at-home test strips for COVID around the beginning, middle of May, late May. The reason being, um, public health emergency ended in early May. As a result, uh, federal government was no longer going to pay uh, providers as much, if at all, for uh, this at-home test strips like they were in the past. There was a major excess of these tests because of the 2021-2022 COVID wave. I think that might have been Delta. All I know is I had it. Um, came back from vacation with COVID. It was wonderful. At any rate, there is an excess of these tests. Providers and suppliers, whether legitimate or illegitimate, bought hundreds of thousands of them with the intent of sending them out. Um, in one case in particular, there is a, a provider who uh, build Medicare for $8.4 million of these test strips. Public health emergency ended. They were no longer in use. They had to get rid of that inventory so they can fill their shelves with other scams like genetic testing. So uh, if you do receive unsolicited at-home test strips, uh, please do give us a call. We'll talk about reporting in, in a little bit. Give us a call, save the box, uh, send it to us. We'd be happy to work with our uh, law enforcement par partners at the federal level to uh, start to take down some of these issues. All right, this is the big piece of detecting. Uh, again, I'll, I'll try to keep this fairly simple. Spot fraud, errors, and abuse by using a personal health care journal. Uh, I took a little screenshot of uh, the logbook page, as we call it. We do produce these. If anybody is interested, or, or Katie, if you want any, um, Please let me know. I have a, a box of about 5,500 of them down at the office. So um, let me know. At any rate, what we ask is that folks utilize a piece of paper, their phone, uh, our journals, uh, preferably are already set up for you. When you go to receive a healthcare service, whether that be seeing your doctor, uh, a pharmacist, a physical therapist, what have you, 
write down the date of that appointment. Write down your doctor's name. And write down a quick little summary of the reason for your visit, any notes, how long the visit took, and what happened during that visit. I mentioned earlier those healthcare insurance billing statements, Medicare summary notice, explanation of benefits. Uh, Medicare is very convenient. They make it so easy for people to remember that uh, at the end of every quarter, it's the end of every three months, they will send a Medicare summary notice. Now, I find it difficult to believe that most of us, uh, if we had a service rendered to us in January, would remember come April what happened in January. I know I certainly couldn't. Uh, having a record is a really good way uh, to compare what actually happened per your records to what Medicare is saying the provider told them was happening. So on your summary notice or your explanation of benefits, you will know what that is. Bold letters at the top, it says, this is not a bill. That's true, but it's still really important. Uh, please open that document when you receive it. Take a look. Look at uh, the, the, the date that services were listed on their provider name and what they said happened. Uh, the date should be the same. Providers should be pretty much the same. The reason for the visit might be, there might be some medical jargon in there that makes it a little bit different, but it should be in the same vein as what happened. What we ask is that when you're making that comparison, look for inconsistencies, things that are inaccurate. Uh, we see this sometimes in podiatry. You know, on your record, you'll write down, oh, doctor so-and-so trimmed my nails during this visit. Um, and then you'll get your Medicare summary notice and you'll see, wait, why did doctor so-and-so bill me for full toenail removal? This is actually the number one way that providers who are acting in bad faith get caught um, is people, multiple Medicare beneficiaries actually uh, noticing something wrong in their statement and standing up uh, to it. That being said, please please do understand that 99.99% of providers are acting in your best interest. They wouldn't be doctors or providers if they weren't out to do good. Uh, there are a small sum of them who are, are not acting in good faith. Uh, you can always check uh, your statements to make sure that your provider is providing you the best service and also billing Medicare in an ethical way. This just summarizes that. You recognize the name of the doctor, check the dates. Are the services listed the same as what are on your records? And what's the paid amount about the same? You don't have to worry too, too much about the paid amount unless if you're going to owe money. Um, typically, Medicare uh, dictates the rate and the provider pays that or uh, gets paid that amount. Um, you will typically see discrepancies. You'll see, like, for example, for a CPAP machine, I don't know, maybe the provider will bill $2,000, Medicare will pay $1,600. Um, that's just a contracted rate. You're not on the hook for the other $400. If they're telling you you are, please give us a call. All right. Speaking of giving us a call, reporting. What does the SMP do? What happens when you give us a call? Several different things can happen. First and foremost, we want to make sure that you as the beneficiary are taken care of, that you are safe. That your, that your information has not been compromised. If it has, we want to safeguard you and your information moving forward. So we'll do a quick case review. We'll have a discussion with you uh, about what, what's going on. And uh, then we'll, we'll make a decision about what to do. So if you think your information has been compromised, um, if you're unsure, you can give us a call. We'll be happy to uh, get in the line with Medicare with you and advocate for you to get a new Medicare number. Uh, typically, it takes about two weeks. We can get on the phone with them and have that done in about 20 minutes. Um, so give us a call if you're if you're worried that something uh, not right is happening with your Medicare. You think you've been scammed. Uh, we're happy to help. That's confidential. We won't tell anybody. Um, we will probably ask for some of your records. We are certified by CMS to have that information. Uh, that way we can build a case. So if we do go to refer it for investigation to the FBI, the Office of the Inspector General, uh, ACL is our grant funder. That's the Administration for Community Living. The Attorney General we also work with. And then UPIC is the Program Integrity Contractor who will go in and actually look at claims and records. Um, in order to make a really good case for, for investigation, uh, it's useful for us to have as much information as possible. Uh, we have direct channels with some of the federal law enforcement 
uh, agencies. So uh, our cases typically do get seen and they do get uh, bucketed into other similar cases so that uh, trends can be identified at the federal level. On that complaint and resolution side, that's kind of uh, calling 1-800-MEDICARE with you, uh, or we can give you the information if you want to advocate for yourself and give a call to 1-800-MEDICARE. Um, we always recommend credit alerts. So we call TransUnion, Equifax, Experian. You can help with that as well. Uh, have a credit alert put on your credit so that uh, they'll let you know if anybody's trying to run your credit. Sometimes in these cases, there are multiple different things going on. So uh, your, your credit information could be compromised as well. Uh, the first piece is provider education. We kind of work with the program integrity contractor there. Uh, some providers actually, <laughs> believe it or not, don't realize that they're billing in an abusive way. Uh, so we try to uh, let them know about that. Um, okay. Some other resources for reporting. Um, the FBI, IC3.gov, is a really, 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 really strong place to report. I will admit the form is a bit long. It's a bit lengthy, but um, it's totally worth it. The uh, FBI can really step in and do a lot of powerful work, both at the individual and overall levels. Uh, the Attorney General is on your side in many different issues, not only for healthcare fraud, but uh, for other types of fraud as well. Medicare and Social Security's information is listed there. Medicare is at 1 800 633 4227. That's the important one. Uh, last one there, PA Medi, Pennsylvania Medicare Education and Decision Insight. Uh, these folks offer free and unbiased Medicare insurance counseling uh, all year, and they will actually sit down with you and take a look at what your needs are for health care, uh, compare plans with you, and educate you so that you're able to make an informed decision. They will not make a decision on a health care plan such as a Medicare Advantage plan, uh, for you, but they will provide you the information to make a good decision. Uh, this is really important during open enrollment, October 15th through December 7th each year. Uh, give the PA Medi folks a call. Their statewide number is 1-800-783-7067. If you have questions specifically about what types of healthcare services or uh, insurance is available, what might be best for you, uh, give them a call. Uh, please keep in mind during open enrollment in a couple months, Things change every year. Uh, it's a good idea to, to check and make sure if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan that the providers who you see are still in network, that the drugs that you receive as part of your Part D uh, prescription drug plan are still covered in the formulary. Um, sometimes people get bamboozled when they go to the pharmacy and all of a sudden the drug that cost them $5 in September or in, in December cost them 500 in January. So keep an eye out for that. All right. That is it for me. Uh, thank you so much for the attention. I will uh, pull my slides out, out in a second and take a look at the chat. We are toll free at Cary 1-800-356-3606. You can visit us online at www.cary.org, C-A-R-I-E.org. Uh, this is the part where I have to be a little bit hypocritical. Help is always, quote unquote, free and confidential. So now that I've spent 30 minutes telling you not to listen to free unsolicited services, please give us a call. We are truly free, truly confidential. We're also on social media at Carry Advocates or at Pennsylvania SMP on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. And we have a wonderful series of volunteer conducted videos on YouTube. Okay. I will stop talking. Stop sharing my screen as well. That was really great. And Carrie is just, uh, I've used them so many times, really wonderful people there, supportive. Um, so great. Uh, so feel free folks to put things in the Q&A box. And while we wait for that, um, I was going to say, Dan, we, a few of us recently went to the Montgomery County Elder Justice Roundtable. Yes. Great event. And we learned so much about fraud and what's going on. And it's just getting more and more elaborate to your point and really getting people into an anxious state because when you're emotional, that's when you make those decisions. Yeah, that's such such a good point. And I'm I'm happy you're able to get to that event. They uh the Elder Justice Roundtable has been going on for years and it's just such an excellent resource. That is so true. The the emotional trigger is um, hey, is this Miss Smith? You know, say, yeah, oh well, uh, this is Medicare calling to let you know that your services are going to expire if you don't 
if you don't confirm your Medicare details, they want to scare you. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, always take a deep breath uh, and take the steps to confirm things yourselves. Uh, if you have questions, make that call on your own. I, yes, that's spot on. And one of the things that stuck with me was the one of the presenters said, all of us are nice people. We don't want to hang up on somebody, things like that. So you can say, no, thank you, and then hang up. Um, yeah, so don't yes, hesitate seriously. to do that. So um, we have some questions coming in. Someone's asking, if uh, is there a way, Dan, that you could send me the appointment list and then I could send that out virtually, like through an email, or is it only in a uh, paper uh, form? Appointment list as in where we will be presenting or appointment list as in these slides? The slot, well, the slide that you had where you, you said um, people could keep track of what appointment Oh, oh yeah, is. yeah, the trackers, absolutely. Okay. Um, sure. I typically don't take folks' address addresses uh, myself, but yes, they let you know, yeah. Katie, I can send it to you. That would be great. So Carol, thank you for that question. That'll be sent to me and I will get it out to everyone that signed up today. Yeah. Um, the next question, do scammers use the dark web and does using a credit freeze help? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yes to both, dark web, absolutely. Um, it's actually a really good question because it's it's kind of difficult to to think about it this way with Medicare fraud in particular because it's so specific. But um, we got to think of these scammers as criminal networks. These are like I seriously think of the Godfather because these are like these are serious criminal networks. They are enterprises. They are not only doing Medicare fraud. So uh, yes, they are into the dark web. Uh, that's a good way for them to get uh, information, full information out. Uh, including things as simple as phone numbers and addresses they can do a lot with um, social engineering scams too, um, using artificial intelligence to actually take information from various people, social security number from person A, Medicare number from person B, date of birth, person C, and basically creating like this metaverse uh, human to bill Medicare. Uh, that kind of stuff is pretty malicious. Um, so the dark web is being used we do see this a lot with data breaches too and third party uh, marketing agencies kind of sharing, well, not sharing, they're selling it, they're making a profit, selling people's information. Um, credit freeze is a great recommendation. If you are not planning to have your credit run, if you're not buying a house, if you're not buying a car, if you're not going on an extensive vacation, you need to have your credit run or open a new card, you might as well put a freeze on it because you're not using it anyway. That way, if a scammer does get your information, they're going to get stonewalled. Um, it's also a good, I, I just want to mention real quick, the banks are our friends. More often than not, uh, Wells Fargo, PNC, what have you, all, all the banks um, are typically going to be your friend. If you are concerned that, that charges are being on your account that aren't getting caught, call your bank. Uh, they, are, they are really good at spotting that stuff. Thank you. I, to your point, Dan, I, I've been so interested to learn. I don't know why I never thought of it this way, but this is people's jobs, these scammers. This is their nine to five. You know, I mean, they have this down to a science. So a really good point about how sophisticated it is. Uh, next question comes in. What should I do with the COVID swaps that were unsolicited? You said to save the box and report it. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you do think that you received box, a box of COVID swaps without knowing, uh, without ordering them yet, yeah, please do save that box um, and, and you can send it to us. Uh, we, it's really useful for us to actually see what the address, how they're packing that stuff. Um, so we can send that over to our friends at the FBI field office and um, they can do an investigation. So uh, you can feel free to, uh, we have an online form, www.carry.org. Uh, you can just let us know there. I will also put my email. I'm not sure. Hopefully you folks yeah, can, I can do it here. I just sent um, www.carry.org in there. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. And so I can, um, you can go to our website, report it that way. You can also give us a call at 1-800-356-3606. Um, yeah. Or you can send me an email and I will get you to our advocate who will help um, give you a call back. Because, uh, yeah, it would probably be a good idea to get your Medicare number uh, redone, get a new Medicare number just in case, probably put a, a credit alert on. And, uh, yeah, it's useful for us to have that box. So um, if that has happened, you or a loved one, uh, you can send me an email or 
put information into our online form and uh, I will get you to our advocate. Thank you, Dan. Well, um, I'll just do my little outro, but if anything comes up, we can answer some more questions. Thank you all for joining us today. Big thank you to Dan and Carrie for joining us. This will be recorded. You will get it in your email. Um, I will also get out to you the appointment information that Dan will share with me, and we can put in Carrie's contact information in that email as well. But never hesitate to reach out if I can assist uh, connecting you with Carrie. And thank you again, Dan, for making the time today.